Hi, it's Professor Jakovich here, and now it's time for transaction analysis. We're going to do what I call my feel the love method of finding debits and credits and what to do in transaction analysis. Now, why do I call it that? Well, you'll see soon enough. But essentially, the way I'm about to teach you is the way I figured it out on my own when I saw a pattern. So, this is a little unorthodox, but hopefully it will help you all figure out debits and credits and transaction analysis like it worked for me. So here goes. What you see in front of you is a bunch of T accounts under the columns of assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. For clarity, I color-coded them. A little easier to tell what's what. So we're going to pretend that we're starting a business. Now, we have nothing, nothing in any accounts. We have no cash, no assets, no, we don't owe anybody anything, nothing. We're going to start off by saying we need some money to start this business, so we're going to issue common stock, and guess what? People pay us for that, so we'll get cash. So the first things we're going to do is put, you're going to have to learn my shorthand. I'm just going to put CS. Well, I'll put STK for common stock right here because that's an equity account, as you learned in my first video. And then cash, because the first thing you do in any transaction is, number one, you identify the accounts that are affected in some way. And in this case, common stock is obviously affected because we had no common stock and now we have some common stock. We had no cash and now we have some cash. So those two accounts were affected and nothing else really at this point. But as you learned in video two, the left side of the T account is a debit and the right side is a credit. Well, okay, so what do we debit and what do we credit here? Under cash, we're going to debit. And I'm going to show you the, a pattern very, very quickly here. So if we issued $100,000 worth of common stock, we would receive $100,000 in cash. And that would be a debit. The left side would put it right there. And on common stock, it's a credit. For every debit, there must be equal and opposite credits. Rule number one. So how did I know what to debit and what to credit? That's where we're going to feel the love. So hang on because I'm going to show you. At the equal sign, draw a dotted line. Mine's a little scruffy looking. And at the bottom, put a little dot. Now I want you to look at this very carefully. If we want to increase an asset account, which is on this side of the equal sign, basically to go up, to increase, to go up, we must go out. We must go out like that to do a debit. If we want to increase a liability or a stockholder's equity account, on this side of the equal sign, to increase or to go up, we must go out. I'm feeling the love already. <laughs> that looks like a heart. Yes, an ugly one. However, essentially, all we're looking at here is a pattern whereby everything on the left side of the of the equation, the assets, to increase an asset, we must, to increase, to go up, we must go out. And isn't that what we did right there with cash? To in, Our cash went from zero to 100K. We had to debit it, left side. And to increase common stock, to go up, we had to go out, but in the opposite direction. The two sides of the equal sign are mirror, mirror images of themselves. Now, yes, there's a couple of exceptions, but don't worry about that right now. We'll get to that. First of all, basically, to increase an asset account, you're going to debit it. To go up, you must go out and around. 
like the left side of the heart, and liabilities and stockholders' equity to increase those accounts to go up. You must go out, and but in the opposite direction. So it's a credit. Looks like a heart. We, so feel the love. Anytime you want to know what to debit a credit, just feel the love. <laughs> okay, so let's try a second transaction. Now we have money in our company. We're going to need to buy something with it. The first thing we need to do, let's say, is buy inventory. Well, inventory is what type of account? It's an asset. So I will put inventory here. Inventory account. So we're going to spend, let's say, $20,000 of our cash and go buy inventory with it. So, step one, what two accounts are affected? Well, we used cash to buy inventory. So, cash and inventory are our two accounts. Step two, now that we know the two accounts that are affected, which, go, which went up, which went down, did they both go up? Did they both go down? What happened? Did our cash go up or down? Well, we had to spend cash. So remember, to increase cash, we go to go up, we go out. But we're not increasing cash. We're decreasing it. So it's going to be the opposite of the heart, the opposite side of what the heart does, because the heart goes up. We want to go down on cash. So we are going to credit cash for $20,000. Inventory, did it go up? Or down. Inventory went up. And to go up on an asset account, you got it. Feel the love. <laughs> We're going to debit it. We're going to increase an asset account. To increase an asset, we debit it, just like the heart shows. So now what happened? Well, we have equal, for every debit, we have an equal and opposite credit. And the whole left side of the equation didn't change. It's still worth 100K. Our 220Ks cancel each other out. So the value of the left side is still 100K. The value of the right side of the equation is still 100K. We're in balance and our debits equal our credits. We're good to go.